And then as far as your mouthpiece goes, you just pry it off. Now I'm kind of show you now, there you can see just how big that hole actually is, okay? And just that little bit of hole can cause a lot of issues underwater. What's up guys, it's Ryan again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to replace a mouthpiece, but I want to talk a little bit about how you know when it's actually time to replace your mouthpiece. Last night I was at the pool with a student and while breathing and teaching some skills, I started noticing that as I was breathing, I was getting some what was called wet breaths. And there's two things that can actually cause that. If you are breathing and it's just a little bit wet, then of course it's going to be your mouthpiece. If you're breathing and you're almost drowning, that means you're gulfing in water. It's no longer the mouthpiece, it's the diaphragm. And I want to show you that real quick because even though that's not what happened, this is something that you can diagnose in the field. If we look at the inside of a second stage real quick, we will notice that this is the diaphragm area. So this is the part that as you inhale, it kind of gets sucked in, which presses on this demand lever in here. Well, if your diaphragm ever gets a little tiny pin hole in it, if you will, every time you take a breath, instead of sucking in and pressing on that demand lever, it's actually gonna take on water and you're just gonna be engulfing water. Well, in my case, it wasn't like that. It was just a little bit of sippage of water, or sippage of water coming in. And so that indicates that it's typically going to be the mouthpiece. So this is something you can do at home. All you do is just simply take the mouthpiece and you just kind of inspect it. Go all the way around. I'll stretch mine a little bit. And if you come across, actually, I can already see there's a little hole there. And then if we look here on the sides, you'll notice that there's another hole there. That's a great indication that this mouthpiece is bad and it needs to be replaced. So I'm going to show you just how quickly it is to replace a mouthpiece. And like I said, you don't need a technician to do this. You can do this at home. You can even do it at your local dive site. So guys, changing out a mouthpiece is super easy. There's really only two components. You have your zip tie, you have your mouthpiece yourself. A couple of the tools that you may want to consider is a zip tie, a new mouthpiece, and I like these little clippers right here. I think they come in really handy and make your job a lot easier. Some people use a pair of pliers to do this. I don't, I just use the clippers. So all I'm gonna do is just take my clippers. I'm gonna get on top of that zip tie there. And you can either just cut through it. The reason that a lot of times I don't cut through it, if I'm changing, say, something out, I don't want to damage this. So you can just give it a little twist. That zip tie comes right off. And then as far as your mouthpiece goes, you just pry it off. Now I'm kind of show you now, there you can see just how big that hole actually is. Okay? And just that little bit of hole can cause a lot of issues underwater. You're going to take your new mouthpiece, and these are usually labeled with the word up on them. This is a little bit dirty. It's been in my safety dive kit here. But you can see where it says up. That just simply means that's the way we're going to orient that mouthpiece. All we've got to do, stick it up on the second stage, like so. And now we can put our new zip tie on. Now, a lot of people like the zip ties that are flat. They don't like this little knobby area. To me, it personally, it doesn't matter. I like to go ahead and kind of get mine semi-started like so. I'm going to slide it over. Now, I do want to get it oriented to where it's not going to be uncomfortable when it's in my mouth. So I like to kind of put it to the side here. And then once it's cinched down like that, you can give it a little pull. They do make uh, little cutters that will tighten it up. I don't like mine too awful tight, just enough that that mouthpiece is not going to twist around. And I take my cutters here and try to get it as flat as possible. And just like that, we were able to fix a faulty mouthpiece. So there you go, guys. That's how easy it is to replace a mouthpiece. This is something you can do. You don't even have to be a trained technician to do it. If you do want a little bit more information on this, check out the SSI Equipment Techniques program because we go a little bit more in depth on just how to change a mouthpiece. We talk about changing out hoses and things like that. Just remember, if you've got wet breathing, it's most likely going to be the mouthpiece. If you're getting drowned every time you breathe, that means you're inhaling a lot of water. Then, of course, it's going to be the diaphragm directly inside the second stage and not the mouthpiece in that case. But guys, now you know a little bit more about how to fix a regulator or fix a wet breathing regulator. And, of course, now you can diagnose that problem in the field and what's actually causing it. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it educational, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it. If you got any questions, comments, or concerns, drop me a comment down below, and I'll try to answer it the best I can. I've got a student coming out to do a little bit of diving with me today, so i got to get packed up, head out to the quarry, and go make the dive. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Take care. God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.